Shalom, everyone. This is Mike Sutcliffe, your online ministries pastor here at Corner Fringe Ministries. Thank you for joining me today again as we continue to count the Omer together in 2023. Today is uh, week seven, and we are in day 46. This means we're almost done. We have Almost made it to the 50-day mark. Just a few days left, so I hope that you'll continue to join me. And then on the 28th, you will join us here at Corner Fringe Ministries, either in person in Coon Rapids, Minnesota, or online at the Corner Fringe YouTube channel for a time of free to worship. This is one of my favorite services of the year. Well, do me a favor, open up your Bibles and read along with me. We're going to look at Psalm 128, just six verses, so we're probably not going to go very long today. And uh, pretty excited that uh, we, we made it this far. And thank you for your words of encouragement. In yesterday's video, I saw people from uh, Missouri and New Zealand and South Africa. Hello to all of you. Thank you for joining me. All right, let's read together. Psalm 128, A Song of Ascents. How blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in his ways. When you shall eat of the fruit of your hands, you will be happy and it will be well with you. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine within your house, your children like olive plants around your table. Behold, for thus shall the man be blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion, and may you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Indeed, may you see your children's children. Peace be upon Israel. Well, friends, I think maybe that's a good place for us to start today. Reminding ourselves that we need to be praying for the peace of Israel. The peace that takes place between the children of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the natural. The uh, descendants that they would have peace between themselves and the Messiah. And Lord, and between all the world around them, this is a this is a wonderful passage. When I begin to think in a bigger picture, for example, the idea of prosperity, this is a, this is what it is promising here. It is that the man will be blessed who does these things. The man who fears the Lord will experience a prosperity, and so will Jerusalem. You know, the best definition of I've ever heard of prosperity, while it's related here to the physical, the financial, the wealth matters. The best definition, in my opinion, of prosperity is the abundance of God's presence in your life. And I think that connects very well to this passage. So let's start with the beginning, a song of ascents. What exactly is an ascent? Well, it is a upward movement. You know, in the physical, this is, uh, it, it's also connected to a pilgrimage. And I want you to think about that because there are Three pilgrimage feasts in which the men of Israel are commanded to come to Jerusalem to make a sacrifice. Those three feasts are Pesach or Passover, which is the spring feast. Then you have this feast, which is Shavuot or the Feast of Weeks. And there's one more. It's the fall feast of Sukkot or the Feast of Tabernacles. In each of those feasts, the male in each home would then go up to Israel as a pilgrimage to make uh, a sacrifice. This would also be a time when the priests would go up to the temple and they would make a sacrifice. There's So you see this over and over connection between upward movement. For me personally, when I read this passage, I think of Isaiah's story of entering into the throne room and what that looked like. And in my head, I just keep picturing how even in the heavens, they could not contain the robe of God. And so it just filled it. And yet there's this staircase that leads up to the Father. And you and I have been invited to boldly enter into that throne room. What a wonderful privilege we have. And why not? Why should we not enter into this season with an expectant heart? How blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in his ways. You know, this is a pretty simple statement. There's not a lot to dig into or to unearth from it. Fearing the Lord is having a proper understanding of who he is. You know, there's a there's a question that seems to be going around right now that I think is a good one that I have to ask myself from time to time. Do I fear God or love God for what he has done, or do I fear and love God for who he is? Once I get a better understanding of how great God is, it makes it so much easier for me to fear and love him. 
And the idea of walking in his ways is a simple one as well. This is a lifestyle. This is more than going to church on Sunday or Shabbat. This is more than telling the people that you are a Christian because you were born in America. This is making a lifestyle of doing and walking righteousness. How do I, and why do I say that? Because it's according to his ways, his commandments, his precepts, his instructions. When we make decisions, are we doing it in accordance with his will? These are the ways that we know this. And when we do this, he promises a blessing. Now, the picture that I get from blessing over and over again is sharing of oneself. That's what the word means, right? So when the Lord shares himself with us, he pours out blessings upon us. He does this with those who fear him and obey him. That's a great way for me to remember this. And what happens next is really powerful. Because he says, when you shall eat of the fruit of your hands, you will be happy and it will be well with you. You know, men, this message is really for us. This is the, this is the, what we need to take away. Because our purpose as men of God is to be much more than going into the workplace and providing for our home. The Bible teaches us that in order for us to be the spiritual head of our homes, we have to provide a few things for our spouses and our children. We are to provide shelter, which physically obviously refers to like making sure that the, the mortgage is paid or the rent is paid, that you have a place to lay your head at night. This is also a place where there's safety. So for us, we need to protect, we need to provide a shelter for our family. A place where they feel safe to grow and to and to nurture. We're supposed to provide food. Meaning, in the physical, we're supposed to put food on the table, right? Not to say that women aren't doing that. Please, ladies, don't misunderstand. But men, I'm talking to you. Our job is to work and make sure that our family has food to eat in the physical as well as the spiritual. The spiritual food comes from the Word of God. And if you're not teaching, if you're not feeding your family the Word of God, you're missing an incredible blessing. And the other one is the intimacy piece. When we are, we're supposed to provide intimacy in our marriage, intimacy with our relationships with our children, and foster that same intimacy for our wives and our children to have intimacy with God. And when we do these things, the fruit of our hands will be happy and it will be well with us. We live in a society today when our homes are all falling apart and if I were an outsider today looking into a Christian home through a window and saying, look at the divorce rate is just as high. The rebellion in the children is the, is the same as the rebellion in the children of the world. They look unhappy. They look sad. They look distressed. I would not want to follow our God. So we need to remember that everything we do is a testimony and we give praise to the glory of God and witness to the world around us. And when we do this, men, it says our wives will be like a fruitful vine within our homes. This within is the inter innermost, the most inner part of our homes. She will become like a fruitful vine. You know what a fruitful vine does? It kind of spreads out throughout the entire area and produces fruit everywhere it goes. That is what it's talking about. Our children will be like olive plants around our table. That olive plant is oil. It produces this beautiful oil, this fragrant oil that lights candles, that's good for sacrifice. I mean, it's just wonderful what this oil can do. Behold, thus shall the man be blessed who fears the Lord. So he literally is saying, when we fear God, men, when you and I have a proper understanding of who God is, we're going to be blessed for it. And this is the part that I like. The Lord bless you from Zion. Remember, I just talked to you about you from the innermost part of your home, that, that deep sanctuary within your home. Well, that's what Zion refers to. This is referring to the temple, the innermost room, the holy of holies, where the Lord himself resides, is speaking out to it. And so the Lord bless you from Zion. This is a wonderful blessing that God is saying to us, men, that if we obey him, if we humble ourselves and we fear him and we obey him, he is going to bless us from the innermost part of the sanctuary. And then we may see the prosperity all the days of our lives, the prosperity of Jerusalem. Indeed, may our children's children see the same things. Friends, I hope that as you think about where we're heading in the next few days, that your heart is filled with anticipation and that this is a good time for you to maybe pull your children aside and share the psalm with them today. Maybe it's a good time for you to talk 
speak truth into your wife's life, giving her an opportunity to maybe uh, take the pressure off of her so she can enjoy a Bible study with other ladies. Maybe it's time for you two to take a walk and talk about the Lord and what you're going through in your lives. Because this is what we need to do. We can't do this alone. And men, you and I, we have been called to be the spiritual heads of our homes. And I hope that we can encourage one another to fulfill that calling. Because the Lord has made us to do this. This is what we've been created for. And the world is waiting for you and I to stand up and do exactly the work we've been called to. Friends, I hope that you will continue to join me tomorrow as we're going to be in week 7, day 47. We're going to look at 8 verses, Psalm 130, 1 through 8. And uh, maybe today, I'd love, I'd just love to hear, what do you think the role of a man is in the church today? Love to hear that in the comments. And uh, until next time, shalom.